Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have the maker of the tan stack himself, Tanner Lindsley. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. Uh, so I, I think that it, for those of us who work in React, we've probably heard your name um, across a, a bunch of different places, right? Like you, in addition to React Query, um, you've also made React Table and a whole suite of tools that show up all over the place when you're looking for for things to, you know, just make your React workflow uh, easier, I guess, less less painful. Um, yeah. But for those of us who are not familiar with your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background? Sure. Um, so I have a startup called Nozzle, and that's where we basically reverse engineer Google search rankings. Okay. Um, provide that data to people. In building Nozzle over the last five or six years, uh, I've run into a ton of things with React that just, like you said, were a little painful. Um, you know, the first library that I built that got some traction was React Table. Mm -hmm. um, and because building tables seems like something that should be easy, but it's not, uh, especially when it gets <laughs> like into like not. data grid stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, sorting, filtering, pagination thing kind of blows things up and in your face. Absolutely. So that's been around for quite a while. Uh, I have a couple of other small repos that I've built here and there. React Virtual is just like a little virtualization one. Uh, I did a lot of work on Chart.js. Um, I even had a little stint in uh, doing static site generation with React Static, but oh. I don't maintain that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my latest one is React Query that it just technically turned a year old a couple weeks ago. Um, but no it's, it's kind of been... It's been in the, you know, in the spotlight for about uh, eight months. So, yeah. And so React Query, um, I guess to, to maybe start from, from like the broad view, right? Like why? So if I, if I'm looking at querying data in React, you know, I, the browser has a built-in fetch API. So what, what am I doing with React Query that is, is different from the fetch API? Or I guess maybe a better question is, what is the Fetch API not doing that React Query is helping me with? That's a good question. So you're using the Fetch API, you're using the browser cache, like you can still use caching headers and whatnot and like save on bandwidth and mm -hmm. speed, right? But that, that concept of caching doesn't carry itself all the way down to the user experience in your application. Like even if you have to, even if you refetch data and it's like right there at the browser cache, um, you know, a lot of the systems we have in place in React, they're, they're not going to like, I hate to use this word, but they're not going to suspend while that happens and make it feel like it's just there instantly, right? Mm -hmm. um, so first and foremost, React Query is kind of like this really light caching layer that just lives in memory inside of your application. Okay. It, it doesn't uh, take over the responsibility of, of, you know, using the right cache headers and and doing like server side and uh, browser level caching, but it's more of a cache to improve the user experience um, and and possibly uh, fill in some of those gaps. Uh, you know, if you don't know a lot about browser caching, then React Query can also help you a little bit there. So first and foremost, it's like a UX driven library. It's built to improve. Ooh, we just lost your audio for a second. Oh wait, I think I heard you again. So it's built to improve. Built to improve the uh, first and foremost the user experience and also the developer experience in trying to work with that data. Nice. Yeah, and and I think that's a really important distinction too because this is um, this is something that we see that comes up a lot is we talk about user experience, we talk about developer experience, and and sometimes a tool will over-index on one or the other where the user experience is really good, but oh my god, is it hard to build? <laughs> Um, yeah. or, you know, you kind of go too far on the other way and the develop, the developer experience is a dream. And then the, the end product is just kind of a, a drag to use for, for the end user. Um, yeah. Finding that right balance is difficult for sure. Uh, and so that, that's, uh, you, so you mentioned a couple things, like you mentioned caching headers. So, so react query is going to deal with that for us. Uh, not technically. So React Query is really agnostic as to how you actually fetch your data. Okay. The only thing that it needs to know about is a promise. 
So oh, uh, React, React Query doesn't necessarily know about the fetch API or, or any of the actual mechanisms or protocols that you're using. It just knows you know, about asynchronous operation. That's really all, all that matters. Fascinating. So does that mean that like I, I get to choose my data fetching library then? So if I want to yeah. use the fetch API, I can. If I want to use Axios, I can. Um, yeah. What about like server-side rendering? Like if I pull in isomorphic fetch, Will that work? Um, yeah, so the server-side story for React Query is interesting. Um, there is, there, it has a great story for SSR that revolves around hydration, the same way that uh, oh, okay. you, know, you, you hydrate uh, the React application when it gets to the client. Um, similarly, you would basically, you, you fetch that data server-side into a cache, and then you send that cache with your HTML. And you rehydrate oh, it. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah. That, so that's, I, I totally get that. That totally makes sense. Well, yeah. cool. Um, so I, I, I have a million questions, but I feel like it might be easier to just look at this, right? So maybe, yeah. Go ahead. And one of them, too, that while you were, uh, while you're saying, oh, I can use whatever I want, you can also use GraphQL clients, which kind look of at that. opens up uh, some interesting like architectures and discussion there. So absolutely. Uh, and, and I like, what I like about that is that you're not enforcing an opinion. So I can hit a rest API. I can hit a, and it sounds yeah. like if you're not enforcing an opinion, I could even hit like the file system or something theoretically. Yeah. Speaking. Anything that's asynchronous. Uh, you oh, can that's hit. cool. So that's super cool. Uh, thank you for the sub Ryan. I appreciate it. Um, had nine months time flies. So, uh, how about this? Let's, uh, let's switch over to pairing view. Cause I, I want to see this thing in action. And um, while we do that, let's take a second to talk about our sponsors. We've got uh, a, a live captioning today. I really hope that I fixed this. I did, I fixed it. Okay, good. Um, so we've got live captioning happening right now by White Coat Captioning. Thank you so much to Ewan, who's in the in the chat right now. Um, and that is made possible through the generous support of Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0, who all kick in to make this show more accessible to more people. You can find that at lwj.dev slash live if you want to see the live chat. Um, we've also got the, the video and the, the team chat playing in here so you can uh, kind of see it all at once. Um, also, make sure you go and follow Tanner. And he's on Twitter at Tanner Lindsley. Uh, and we are taking a look today at React Query. So here's a link. Um, all right, I'm ready to roll. So where should we start if we want to give this thing a spin? Uh, let's dive into that repo you've got. Um, it's actually set up to be just kind of this dumb little blog example that, uh, lets you add and remove blog posts and kind of look at some of these things, uh, kind of in a transitional lens a little bit. So okay. we'll start off with no react query. Uh, and I, I can incrementally help you add in some of these, uh, these features to show you exactly how it feels to use it, you know, and instead of just like dropping a React query example into your lap, right? Got it. Okay. So um, let's see. I haven't done anything on this yet. So let me run the. Yeah. Uh, let's just do yarn. like a. Let's so, do a yarn install. So we'll install dependencies here, and then let's take a look at what's inside. So we've got a an index page, and yep. let's see, we've got like a wrapper. Um, a sidebar, admin section, blog section, and looks like we have our sidebar here, our main here, and then some routing. So yep. home page is a welcome page. Mm -hmm. And then we've got an admin page and a blog. And we can pull up individual posts in either editing mode or, or blog mode. Um, cool. So let's start this thing up. Looks like we're going to use dev. Yep. Yarn dev should do it. And that's going to give us localhost 3000. If I can copy paste it, Looks like I missed a letter. Okay. So we've got our homepage. There's our, our welcome. Go to our blog. We're loading. We've got blog posts. Yep. And then if I go to the blog's ID, we get the full content. Yep. Okay. 
So this is simple. Yeah, yeah. This, and this is really straightforward. And, you, and as you said, this is not currently using, like, let's look here. We've nope. got screens. Here's our blog index. So we've got use posts. And yep. when we call use post, there's a hooks library. And we're loading it using Axios. Yep. Okay. So this looks like what I would do. You know, I, I, I've stopped using Axios because I, it, I just, I, I don't know, I got converted to fetch at some point, but mm -hmm. I, this looks very familiar in terms of how I would set up a, an app if I was going to do this. So yeah, I think this format is pretty familiar to most people. Yeah. You know, that, that uh, have fetched data in react. Excellent. Yeah. So this, um, and, and this, then I can see a couple things that I don't love. Like when we click through here, we can see that we have that loading screen and then yep. I click and I have that loading screen. And now we've already loaded that data. So the fact that it's taking that much time is yeah, kind of a bummer. really annoying. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then let's see our admin, we have the ability to edit. And then it looks like if we pull up, we can load and we still got that, that loading screen. Yep. And also if, if say we were on the blog post page and even in development here, if we were to go to the actual JSON store and change one of the titles for that blog, uh, we'd either have to reload the page or like, you know, unmount the component and remount it to like get, like to see that uh, it should be under store.json. It's just like a little JSON store file. Got it. But if you were to, if you were to change the title, you know, of that first post, um, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make itself into the dev environment even. Until I without refresh. Do, without doing some type of refresh or, un, or unmount and remount, you know? Yeah. So that's, a, so, that's also a bummer. Um, yep. and, and you're saying, so all of these things that we've just listed is kind of our, our list of grievances. These are all things that, uh, react query is going to help us with. Yeah. Essentially nobody wants to use an application where every click you see a loading bar for something. Yeah. Um, especially in, especially when you're developing applications that can get really annoying because usually it's repeated actions. You're kind of going between different places uh, multiple times, you know? So it's like every single time you go back to the home screen, you know, you see this loading thing and you're like, oh no. So I, I yeah. And I'm, I'm just laughing because uh, David Korshid's in the chat right now, uh, letting us know that both is loading and is success can be true at the same time. And he would like for you to see him after class. <laughs> Tell, tell David that's not possible. Oh no, impossible states are impossible. Um, but yeah, so this I think is, uh, this is gonna be fun, right? So I'm, yeah. I'm ready, if, where, where should we start? Like, should we start on the blog page or somewhere else? Um, let's, let's start on the blog page. Let's, okay. and the nice thing is we don't actually need to start on the blog page. We could start in that use posts hook. Cause that's really where all the logic is happening that we're going to be working with. That's, that's where the action is. Okay. So I'm, I'm in use posts. Yep. So first thing you want to do is uh, there's kind of two sides to react query. There's queries and mutations, and we're going to talk about mutations later if we can, but okay. for queries, uh, react query exports um, a use query hook. So you can just import uh, one of the named imports use query. It's just camel cased okay. from React Query, and then uh, we're going to use use query to basically replace all of this code in here. So, okay, a anywhere you want. Let's just start by calling use query, and I don't, I don't know if you have IntelliSense on, but we can kind of get a feel for what use query takes as um, parameters. So, I in this particular code profile, I don't have uh, IntelliSense on because it. The pop ups That's get a totally little noisy. Fine. Yeah, yeah. So the first parameter that use query takes is some unique identifier to describe whatever it is you're fetching. Okay. Uh, in the most simplistic examples, it could just be a string. So okay. for this example, I think just a string, I, I usually call it posts, right? That's what we're fetching. Okay. And, and you don't even need that slash in there. It could just be, yeah, just posts. Got it. The uh, the second parameter that you're sending through for use query is going to be the fetcher function. So this is the asynchronous function 
that's responsible for either getting your data eventually mm -hmm. or, or throwing an error if okay. something bad happens. And is this, um, like, is it in an object or is it just like the function? It's in... just the function. Yeah. Okay. And as so long as it returns I would be a promise. Like async. And then I would probably just copy this, right? The. Yeah. In fact, in this case, uh, you wouldn't even need to do the async business if you just wanted to do an inline function that returns axios.get. Whoops. Okay. So I've got. Oh, and we don't have to await because axios.get will return a promise. Yep. And so we can just trust that the yep. the JavaScript knows that um, async await is just syntactic sugar on top of promises and everything will work the way we expect. Exactly. Okay. So all of this state business down below here is still important, but React queries use query hook handles all of that state. So okay. you can get rid of that entire reducer. We're not going to need it anymore. No more reducer. Yep. Uh, the fetch function, clearly we don't need that anymore. And React Query also handles all of the lifecycle around um, all of your fetching. So we don't need okay. the effect at all. In fact, oh. we don't need any of it. <laughs> just, okay, so just, uh, yeah, well, just, actually, just I guess. So the the nice thing here, and I kind of cheated a little bit with, with this example. Um, I used the same return structure okay. uh, for that custom hook that use query returns as well. So you can literally just return use query here. Oh, okay. So then if I take this out, then what we'll get is the the spread state then would be the fetch or the is, is loading is success. Yep. Um, so use query returns like a query object and it has all of that same information on it. It's got okay. the you know, the status enums for David. So he doesn't have to freak out about Booleans. <laughs> it has Booleans, which, uh, you know, I prefer the Booleans and, and, uh, just so David doesn't squirm, like the, the Booleans from this query object that you get back, they are stable. Like they, they can't get into impossible states. Okay. Um, but they're, so they're derived from an underlying status. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Right. And then it also gives you back like, you know, the data property and error property and a couple of other properties we can look at here in a little bit. Okay. So then I'm using this. And then if I go to my index page here, um, I get my post query. So I'm going to just console log this to take a look yeah. at what came back. Sure. Um, David, David is in support of derived Booleans. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, so we've got now we've got this object, right? So can yep. fetch more. We've got clear. We've got our data. So here's our posts, mm -hmm. and then down here we've got um, is error is fetched. Okay, and then we've got this status. So this would be the the more like if you're if you're an X state fan, this would be kind of what you would expect, right? Is a, a like yep. an enum. Yep. Status is like what is the actual state of this machine. If you, mm -hmm. if you want to talk in X state terms, right? Yeah. Cool. Very cool. And then we've got a couple functions here, refetch, remove, uh, last updated. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, this is slick. This is really slick. And honestly, a, a lot of this stuff in here, you don't honestly don't have to interact with that much. Like it's mm -hmm. all there uh, as part of the public API. But for the most part, like I don't even really use much of this other than is it loading, you know, the data, yeah. just kind of the stuff we're using right here. Like and so, uh, that. so with what we just did, does that mean that if I click into one of these posts and then click back out to the blog, I'm not going to see that loading screen anymore because it's already there? Precisely. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. I'm clicking in. So we haven't changed use post yet. We've only changed the use posts. So right. if I did this right, no typos, we're going to see an instant load of the blog. Yep. Boom, look at it go. Okay, so we literally changed like almost, we actually just deleted a bunch of code, which is wonderful. <laughs> like that is so yeah. nice. Um, and you know, we can even look at this. Uh, here's our, our diff here. We went from all of this code down to just this. So just the Axios code here and use query. And that instantly improved the experience of of 
the user. So this is like a DX win and a UX win here because now our, our page loads better and we also had to do less work. So yeah. I think everybody's happy here. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not even like a like a net gain. It's like a double gain, right? You're getting yeah. rid of code and you're getting better features out of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is excellent. So I'm I'm really into that. Um, so then to do the same thing with the use post, let's see if I can do this. Okay. I'm gonna so I'm gonna import use query from React query. Mm-hmm. And then down here, we've got our post ID, and that just returns Axios. Um, and so I'm going to, instead of all of this state, and it looks like this one has the same return value, so I get to delete all of this stuff. And I'm going to return use query, and we'll call it, um, I'll probably just use this post ID. Right, like that seems like a reasonable, unique uh -huh. identifier. I'll give you a little hint here after you get done on the key, but keep okay. going. Okay, okay. Um, and so then my second argument is to have a function that will return fetch post, post ID, and then I can delete this bit. And this should just work, right? Yep. Okay. So what could I have improved here? So uh, this will definitely work. Like this is a unique key for the post itself, right? Um, but for the future, uh, we're going to add some like some organization to this key a little bit. Okay. So you can actually pass an array as a key. Interesting. And instead of just a string, we're going to kind of create some hierarchy here. So we're, we're going to call it posts and then post ID. Interesting. Okay. And then and, do we want to change that gets serialized post? for you? No, nope. It gets serialized okay. for you under the hood and uh, everything's just kind of magical. So. Okay. And so what's the benefit of doing it this way versus uh, another way? Um, I'll, I'll have to show you in a, in a minute, but it, okay. can, it comes down to how can we manually invalidate some of these queries on our page? Okay. Uh, I got you. If, if I were to ask you, you know, which one's easier to remember, right? This kind of, this path kind of based string here or like kind of a structured object. And most people are going to say, oh, well, I can remember the structure, right? And mm -hmm. it's easy, it's easy to turn that into a const to somewhere in your application. So. I get you. Yeah. There's, th there's some other benefits to it too. Uh, some things like prefix matching. You know, like if we wanted to, mm -hmm. uh, if we wanted to refresh all of the posts queries on our page, uh, you, you know, you could do something like uh, invalidate queries posts, mm -hmm. and that and that's going to invalidate like every single thing that matches post prefix. So it it gets pretty cool. I understand. Um, that's really cool. Um, so and then yeah, just while, a, while a it note does work. You know. Yeah. So, okay, so um, so a quick note for the chat. Uh, Q and A is the whole time. If you if you've got a question, fire it off in chat, um, and we will we'll try to answer them in line. Keep in mind if the questions go too rabbit holey, we'll probably push them off to Twitter or, or something else. But uh, you know, definitely uh, definitely do that. So yes, the um, the code about invalidation we're going to get we're going to get to that. Yeah. But let's Soon. let's circle back around though. I, I want to see the. I, I want to make sure that the posts or the post query is working. Yeah. So a, as you were explaining the the invalidation, I was clicking in right, and so we can see now we've got an instant load into the post, and then one that I haven't loaded yet, like this test down here. Right. It loads, but then when mm -hmm. I come back out and click back in, there it is, instant. So now we've yep. got this amazing uh, this amazing experience of very quickly loading all of our posts. And then if, so I didn't ask about this and I didn't look at the code yet, so I don't know if this works, but in the admin section, we've already updated this, right? Because we, it, does admin use the use posts hook to load those posts? Yeah, it does. So this should be instant. And I haven't loaded yeah. this at all. Yeah. So <laughs> oh to the admin. my God, that is amazing. <laughs> I, I love it when things get easy and I don't have to write any code. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That is beautiful. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's great. It, 
this is and this is really nice because I feel like this is something that we've all dreamed about. And this is something that a lot of libraries kind of promise, right? You you see a lot of frameworks and tooling talking about how they're gonna they're going to do this deduplication, do this cache management, do all these things that will make your developer experience really easy. Um, mm -hmm. But typically that comes with a lot of boilerplate. You you feel like you're setting up a lot of stuff up front to yeah. get that to work. And and what's interesting here is we didn't have to do that. Like, are we, is there a context provider somewhere or like something that's keeping this stuff globally available or like how, how is this actually working? Yeah. So we're in V2 right now. So this is V2 of React Query. Okay. And in this particular version, there is just kind of a global singleton mm -hmm. for your app that you can just kind of start firing off queries and everything just works. Like okay. context is not required. Interesting. Um, that's even cooler. And, and it does scale pretty well. Um, in V3 that's coming up here in a couple months probably uh, to help out some of our larger customers, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we're, we are adding um, kind of a provider like a, a query client kind of a provider. Okay. Um, that it'll probably feel a lot like a relay, you know, or something like that, that where you provide the client to your application. Yeah. Um, and, and it'll be using context under the hood to share that client. But at the end of the day, we're not, we're not using context to trigger renders or anything like that. It's, it's kind of just all homegrown. I got you. Okay, cool. So, so right now, I mean, we're what we've we've been writing code for less than 20 minutes and we just made huge front end improvements uh, and also managed to delete like 50 percent of two files, <laughs> which feels pretty good. Um, and, and that was just the hook versions of these files, right? Mm. Like most people will not stop there. You know, if, if you want to get into some of these types of features, you can't just write hooks like that that use use effect and state. Like this is that's where people start. Okay, where do I go from here? Do I go into Redux? Do I get into MobX? Do I? Mm. Usually, they search for a global state management solution that uh, because they they need global state because they need to be able to share all this cache. They need to share the data around, right? Um, whereas global state managers themselves they're more, they afford more to client state management than actually being able to manage all of these like unique server state life cycles, you know? Okay. And I think that's why people get into trouble with global state managers. If you're using a global state manager just to manage like asynchronous data, yeah, you are basically going to end up writing all of the logic that has gone on, gone into React Query on your own, mm -hmm. and, um, and it gets it gets really messy. <laughs> yeah, I can I can imagine, uh, and that that actually kind of ties to a question here. Um, so Nikki in in the chat is asking, uh, can you combine this with something like Apollo, uh, or it, does this replace something like Apollo? So I would say it probably replaces Apollo. Okay. more than using, you could use it with the Apollo, like the client that comes with Apollo to fetch stuff from GraphQL. But at that point, I would say just use a package like GraphQL request, mm. you know, that's just yeah. like, Hey, here's, or you could even just use fetch, you know, that's, that's actually how I send a lot of my GraphQL requests these days is, is the fetch API. Yeah. It's super easy. And the only thing that you're not getting with react query that you might get with something like Apollo or relay is going to be the normalized database for your individual query fragments under the hood. Mm. Um, and to be honest, most people don't even really know what data normalization is doing under the hood. Mm -hmm. And a lot of applications don't really benefit from it or, or they're not, it's not crucial, you know? Yeah. So unless you're Facebook or, you know, some really complex uh, application that's built on like GraphQL and its entire ecosystem. I don't see a big reason to use something like uh, like Apollo uh, or Relay unless you have really really good reason to. You'd be better off probably just using React Query with Fetch, you know, okay. or, or uh, something like GraphQL request. In my opinion. Okay. 
Um, and then I, another question, and then we'll we'll do, write some more code here. Uh, is would you use React Query to manage auth state? Many people do. Um, it just depends a lot on how you do authentication. Okay. Uh, I have some auth state in one of my apps that's really simple, and yeah, I just use uh, React Query to kind of keep it keep it up to date. Okay. Uh, there's some other, I have another auth system that uses Firebase auth, which is a big hairy monster. Yes. Um, and I, I don't even bother. I just have like a custom auth provider for that. I don't even I got bother. You. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, so I, I want to go deeper. Um, what should do we, it. what should we do next? Um, let's do something that's kind of fun before we go over and like get into mutations. Mm -hmm. Why don't we head back to the use post hook? Uh, post singular or plural? The singular version. Okay, so I'm in the singular. Yep, and I'm I'm actually going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to explain it as I do it, is if okay. that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. So remember that global object. You're like, where's all this stuff getting stored? Yes. Right. It's getting stored in this query cache global for now. And something interesting that happened is when we look at a new individual post, we still get that hard loading state, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you noticed. Why, like, we've already loaded that post in the parent query. Yeah, you know? that's that's true. Or, or, or at least part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Part of part of it's there. Uh, the preview, I guess you could call it. So, we we should be able to use that. And the good news is that you can. So, I'm going to take this query cache that has all of our data in it, or should, right? And one of its methods is called get query data. And I'm going to pass it the key for our parent query. Okay. And that technically should give us, in fact, if we console log that out, uh, if we head back to, oh, sorry, fetch post initial data is the function I want to run it in. Duh. Okay, so if we head back to our page and let's just go visit an individual post and just see if we get something in the console. Okay, so let's go to the blog click here, pull up the console, and I think this was it. Maybe I should take out the... Yeah, perfect. Let me let me get rid of the, uh, the part where we're logging the rest of the post so that we can see just the one that we're looking at. Okay. And... So it's interesting. We loaded in straight into it, and it was undefined. Yeah. Right? So, and, that, and that's because it was the first page we loaded. There's not much we can do there, right? Um, but if you're going from the blog into an individual go. post, yeah. yeah, so we see that data. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're just going to try, if, if it's possible, we're going to try and find the post in here that corresponds to the one we're trying to fetch. Okay. And we're going to return it as initial data. So we've got the query cache, and then get query data is a built-in to the query cache. Mm -hmm. uh, and we use the queue or the key of uh, of posts, which is the same one that we used in use posts here. So if we change this, then we would change this. Those those have to match. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then when we do our find, we're gonna get the the entry. So this is an array, right? So we're just doing a find yep. on this array and checking if the ID masks our given post ID. So this all makes sense, right? This is this is kind of like what you would do with an array. You would look up to see if you've got the thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so once we've saved this, then so theoretically speaking, so I'm going to refresh so I get my loading. Okay. And then if this did what we want it to do, we shouldn't see that first loading screen when we click into one of these posts because it's already in the cache, right? Precisely. <sighs> look at that. That is magical. Um, but so then if we refresh, there's something else to we'll note see a here. Quick load. You can you can see that uh, the version that you were seeing on the preview though. So let's go back and do the uh, the initial data flow again. So blog refresh. Okay. Um, click on an individual one and just kind of leave it sitting there. Oh, you, there we go. You'll notice that there's a little ellipses from the preview, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you know you don't want to fetch all the data for an index call on all the posts. Right. That makes sense. So we can also pass, uh, if you come back to the use post hook now, um, we're going to pass, pass initial stale true. And this is just a little hint to React Query that 
what we're passing as initial data is kind of more like a placeholder. Okay. So I load, then I click, there's an yep. ellipsis, and then it loads the new thing. That is yep. slick. I These are patterns that like I always want to build and I just never get around to. So th <laughs> right. this makes me really happy. <laughs> right. It, it's really fun. And, you know, I, I we're not going to do it because it takes a little bit more time, but you can actually do the reverse as well. So if you went into like the use posts hook, uh -huh. uh, you could take the data from use query right here. And uh, sorry, the it's the multiple use posts. You could take the data here and say on success, I want to take this data and we could like loop through the data like this. Uh huh. And grab the query cache and say set query data, and we could do something like uh, posts. Ooh. Post ID. Post. No kidding. Okay, and so then that would already work when we In went fact, into I, one of I these. I basically, I basically just wrote it. So let's see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we're going well, in. So then, would we need to take it out of? Yeah, so here? we can, so let's take uh, this initial stuff out of here. Okay. Yep. So go back to the blog. I'm going to refresh. There's oh, our hopefully load. Hopefully this works. I don't do this one as often, so. Oh, it doesn't like set query. Oh, my bad, my bad. It's it's set query data. Here we go. Here we go. Set query data. Okay. <laughs> so I'm reloading. Let's try again. There's our initial load. And it, it gave me a, a load screen. <sighs> so I, I think it didn't quite take that. Yeah. But and uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe we have to do the stale time to be a little higher, something like uh, five seconds. Let's see if that see if that fixes it. Oh, this okay. this flow is not as uh, it's not as vetted, I guess you could say. Yeah, see that's okay. Ah, it's all right. It's easy enough to do it the other way, right? So we can... yeah, we have we have docs on how to do that. Um, but uh, you can see how flexible things get, right? It's like, Absolutely. How, how do I want to approach kind of these optimistic fetching strategies? And this um, is just so nice that it, it starts with like the placeholder and then pulls yeah. in everything. And um, that's going to get better in V3 too. Like a lot of fun things are going to happen in V3. Very cool. Um, before we go further, let's, I want to show you something that's probably going to blow your mind. It, it's going to be really fun. Wait, hold um, on, it gets better? All right, cool. Uh, yeah, it it's, gets better. So head back to the index page where we've got all of our routes. Index page where we've got our routes. No, this index page. Okay. Um, down here, uh, just after, really just after the wrapper, uh, or yeah, right after the wrapper closes. Right after the wrapper gonna, closes. Okay. We're going to render a new a new component after. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see if I can find you. I'm I'm under the wrapper close here, line forty four. Here we go. So we're going to render the component uh, React Query Dev Tools. Okay. And then we're going to come up top here and import that. So import React Query Dev Tools from React Query Dev Tools. Okay. Let's go back to the app. Look at this. Ooh. Okay. And so then I'm going to click into one of these. We'll click into this one. Oh, that's slick. And then we can pop this open and see what's in it. Dang. So this kind of gives you like the visualization of caching, which is a hard concept to visualize if you think about it. But on the left there, you got that, the list of all those queries that mm -hmm. we have been running. And you can see some of them are grayed out, which means they're inactive because we're not, we're not subscribed to them on the page right now, right? Right. But, but they're in the cache and they're technically still fresh, right? Now... You've got one that's stale on your page right now, post one. Okay. And so we kind of start learning about this concept of stale versus fresh, right? Out of the box, React Query is very aggressive. Okay. So it's kind of always refetching your data in the background. Um, let's go back. Let's uh, 
let's go to an individual post. Just just pick the first post uh, as a, as an example. Okay. And let's go into the code. Uh, let's go into the editor right into the store. Editor into the store. Yep. And, and just go ahead and change the title to something random. Oop, Corgi. There Whoa, we go. did you see that? It was okay. So it showed me fetching, and yeah. I have not refreshed this page, and now it's live. Yeah. I mean, try it again without the dev tools open. Let's just see okay. what happens. Dang. Okay. And so is this like under the hood? Is this polling? No. So it's, it's using your interactions as a user to kind of hint to react query when things should be up to date. So, uh, one of those hints is a window refocus event. So when you, oh. when you refocus the browser, it's detecting like, Hey, you've come back. We should probably update things that are stale or, or need to be updated in the background. Got it. And, okay. And it does it without flashing loading everywhere, right? It just kind of in the background updates. That is super slick. And I, I thought I was trying to like rush to, to get back before it finished refreshing. So that's cool <laughs> that it does that um, on like on yeah. refocus. Man, yeah. That poll, is... Polling can be expensive, right? And you that, can that still... was kind of what I was thinking, right? You can set up polling if you want, and and honestly, I use WebSockets in in my applications to to get specific events and mm -hmm. and tell React Query to kind of invalidate things. Um, yeah, but but the on window focus stuff is is really nice. Without you don't have to do anything; that just kind of comes with it. You so you, you just you just said something that piqued my interest, and I, I just want to ask about it. We don't have to rabbit hole here, but mm -hmm. um, you said that you're using WebSockets to work with react query. Um, yeah. so does that mean that I could do something like a subscription with react query? Kind of. So Re react query doesn't treat subscriptions as like first class things right okay. now. Um, because you don't really need to, the mechanics of subscriptions change a lot. Sure. You could be using Firebase or pusher or, you know, so many mechanisms out there. Um, but really what matters is just, can you respond to an event coming in? Right. right. And with React Query, it's really easy. You just have to have the query cache in hand mm -hmm. and you can respond two ways. If, if your notification from whatever this subscription is has the payload that you need, then you just use the query cache set query data. You know, just kind of, okay, updated. Okay. And everything on the page updates. Wow. Um, if you're doing more of like a pull model where the notification is just telling you something has changed, then instead of doing the set query data, you just do invalidate queries. And so you just tell your queries to go and refetch. Right. And, and that invalidate queries, that's just a, that's just something that's going to come back from the query itself. Or is that a, is that like an, like how we imported the query cache? we would also import like invalidate queries as a like a named function. Or? Yeah, in fact, let's let's get into that a little bit. Okay. Um, do we how much how are we doing on time? We've got 45 minutes. We've got plenty of time. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> let's get into some mutations cuz I think some of this is going to become clear if we get into the mutation part of it. Yeah, let's definitely. Uh, so to look at how this works, um, we've got our admin page here. I'm going to pull up this test post and we'll say um, what up chat and this is the best. And so I'm going to save. Uh Oh, what did I do? Uh, that's totally fine. It's okay. uh, that's expected because right now, if, if you go to the admin screen, go to the index uh, for the admin screen, admin index, and you'll notice something uh, on submit. We are waiting for create posts to finish. And mm -hmm. before, when we weren't using React Query, uh, we had to kind of tell this post query to, to go manually fetch again. Uh, and we've, and, and so that was why when we look at, uh, at this use posts, or use post, I should say, there's mm -hmm. um, an export. Uh, yeah. And, so, and uh, this one a, we don't have anymore. Like we're not exporting it anymore. Yeah. Now, technically, React Query does have a refetch 
uh, function on it that we could use okay. back in, I'm back in index. So instead of the old fetch function we were exporting before, React Query has a refetch. Okay. Um, and this would totally work. But what this means now is that everywhere we use our post query, like in a component, we have to remember to refetch it after something like that happens. Okay. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like having the responsibility to remember when to do things in a lot of different places. I'm, so, I'm noticing a pattern in the way you write code. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's take this. Let's <laughs> Let's take this out for a second so because okay. really we're not going to need it. And honestly, this doesn't have to do that now. And actually, this is just a, an identity function. So instead of on submit, we could just do create post <laughs> right here Got it. instead of on, on submit. So okay, let, let's go into our use create post hook and let's just take a look at it. Okay. So here's use create post. It's and, very similar to what was happening in the other one, right? right? Managing state, instead of firing off something automatically, we're just kind of returning the mutate function that we can use to pass it some values and just have it go save it on the server. Right? And mutate, so when we use this, if we look at the index, um, we are importing, this is just an alias for the mutate function. Yeah, exactly. Excellent, okay. Kind of following so. that trend from from React. Yeah, Thanks. which is nice. Like it's, a, yeah. I do really like this because then you could use multiples and they would all get unique names as opposed to having to do the, I don't like the destructuring alias thing because it, it's hard to read. Um, so it's yeah. nice to be able to return an array where you just get to assign a name instead. Yeah. Um, Some of that might change in the future. And uh, I, I know it's actually going to change a little bit in the future just because we're moving React Query into like an agnostic kind of a position. Oh, nice. Like fra okay. framework agnostic. But for, for now, it's, it's a really nice API. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, so this is really slick. So if I want to refactor this, then theoretically speaking, I'm going to import. Yeah, I, this is what I was waiting for. I just want you to. Like, I have a theory. That is like, use mutation instead of use query. Yeah, and this is how API should work. It's like, oh, you learn one part of the API. I bet I could do the same thing with this other part of the API. I bet it works the same way. So for this one, um, it's going to be create post. So it's going to have a unique identifier, I assume. Actually, it doesn't need one. OK, so no, no unique identifier. No, nope, um, the first thing you're going to pass is the function that's going to perform the mutation. Got it. Okay. So then we will take this part and pass that in. So let's break this onto a couple lines. And then that's probably it, isn't it, to start? Yeah. Uh, all of that other code can, can die. Get on out of here. <laughs> okay. So that's gone. And uh, one thing not to miss here is that mutations usually take variables. So you're going to want to, to uh, add that variable right that's there. That's right. That's right. OK, yeah. So so this would be um, just an object, the, right? Yeah, the post that we want to create. Yep. Cool. So we've got use create post. And here, nothing really changed because use, use mutation, I'm assuming, is returning the same signature, so we get our mutate. It is, and then I we cheated get the, there again. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is great. I mean, I I think that's a good teaching tool, right? Rather than having to explain why it was one way and not the other. Um, right. and so this this create post info that's going to be like the response, like success or the post that was created or whatever your your decision is from your API. Yeah, it's it's got all the state, so it has the same kind of uh, is loading is idle is success error stuff and it has data and error all that good stuff cool. and yeah we're using it down there in that button to mm -hmm. uh, kind of hint to our user what's going on yeah excellent so this is great and then once we get so then theoretically speaking if i i'm going to reload save oh did we not delete that part uh, maybe I didn't hit save. <laughs> or was it use posts? Um, it no. was in the admin index, actually. Oh, 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 okay. And that's gone now, right? It should be. Maybe we just needed to do a hard reload. 
But I don't I don't think that code is anywhere now. Okay, so I'm reloading. Save. What's trying to screen admin? Oh, from? admin post. It's trying to call in oh, here somewhere. We're, we're on an individual post. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to delete there. that. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> now, now we can have the uh, the climactic reveal. There we go. Okay, so that's saved. And then when I come back yeah. out, so, it loads. so change, go back and let's do that again. Uh, you'll want to look at the title because uh, when you when you do that, because the form, the form that you're editing is just kind of like a draft of of what you're editing. So edit edit the title again and hit save, but scroll up to the top of the page so we can see the title. Oh yeah, so it didn't so, change. It didn't change, and this is where that fetch needed to happen, right? Right. But like, but like I was telling you, it, you shouldn't have to remember to do that everywhere. Um, you should only have to remember to do that one place, and and that should be that use create post mutation that we made. Right. And so if I go in here, then I'm going to assume that I've got the ability to pass some kind of like a cache updater. Bingo, yes. Okay. So on here, the, the callbacks for use query and use mutation are very, very similar. Okay. Uh, it's all just on success on whatever. So okay. in, in this case, it would just be on success and it's just a function you want to run. Okay. Um, and this is where, like, this is kind of the first official entrance of the React query, the query cache into your code. So where we want to uh, refetch that, that post query, mm -hmm. we need a way to communicate from this mutation over to that, that individual post query that it needs to refetch. And that's where the query keys come in handy. So we use the invalidate queries function, the method off of the query cache. And you just have to match up the key. So posts and post ID. And now it's how are we... How are we getting yeah, the like, post ID? Where does the post ID come from? Well, right. the post ID can come from two places. Uh, the data coming back, if your API comes back with the data, right. uh, then you could use it there. Um, and, but this is a create post, you know? Or no, sorry, this isn't create post. Does this use save post? This is... We have been editing the wrong ones. You know that? Oh, we have, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, let's let's go over to use save post and let's just bring our work with us. Okay. So uh it's it's this uh Axios patch right here. Okay. Dot then it's this stuff that we kind of want to save. So let's let's bring that up here. So and I'll copy, go into save post, drop yep. this, and then we'll take this part. Yeah, and let's just replace. That's funny. We were we were just mismatched on Yep. There we go. The story of my life, editing the wrong code. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, okay. So, so this is use save post. This is what we've been doing, right? Oh, uh, and and it, it would have worked the same way anyway. All of the demo we have done is still worth it. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. But this is where, again, we could either use the data coming back from this patch, which is very standard, like people returning the data that you get from the patch, right? Right. Um, or, you know, there, so there's error, or sorry, there's data, and then there's also the variables that were sent with, uh, with the mutation. So we could do it from the data or the variables. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, in this case, it is sending it back, so we'll just use the actual data dot uh, ID. Cool. So this is actually the post that we're getting back. Nice. Okay. All right. This all makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, so then... We can save this, uh, and then this one, this is going to be the same thing, right? Like it would be post and then post.i, or there would be no cache to invalidate. Uh, yeah, there, there isn't really, there isn't an individual post to invalidate, but uh, when you add a new post, we you're going to invalidate that to be the whole thing, right? Yeah, and that's where you would just do, this. you one. could either do, yeah, the array version or the string version. It's technically the same thing, but. Sneaky. Just, okay. Just, just like that. Um, Perfect. So we're not going to get a, we won't need that. So we can leave mm -hmm. that. Okay. Let's give this a shot. So, um, 
Now it's updated. Let's go with a sixth time. I'm going to save. Uh oh, query cache is not defined. Oh, I forgot to import it. <laughs> um, so that's fine. We're going to use save post and then I'm going to import query cache. Yep. All right. Then let's try this one more time. But these are good errors. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I know exactly it, how to solve that. I, I like it because it, uh, it kind of, there we go. All right. So now it's updating properly. And if I go back out, yeah, we know it's there. Yep. Slick. Okay. And, and in the admin too. So if you're in the admin and it's the same exact data. So yeah. And I haven't had try to, it. I haven't had to like refresh the page. This is yeah. all. Try, try the uh, create new post. See if that okay. one works. Okay, so I'm gonna let me turn this off. Uh, let's create. Look at it. There you immediately, go. Immediately, immediately available. And notice, I just clicked through. So I went admin into the editor. Then I went to view, and I never had to reload. Like yep. it all just worked. It was all there. That's it's, it's really almost, nice. It it can almost be jarring as a developer if you're used to your application having loadings everywhere. When you get into React Query and they disappear, it's kind of like a, whoa, uh, <laughs> that, that was fast. Was that supposed to work that fast? Mm -hmm. Almost feels like you're doing something wrong, but it's all amazing. Yeah. So so there's a, a question in the chat about um, using like the dot then. So when we, so we write this here, right? Like where we've got Axios mm -hmm. and then we got here. So why wouldn't we do a re, like a, a revalidation here, like uh, you could, you know the these on success uh, these life cycles here, mm -hmm. they're just there as a convenience. You you could write all of uh, you could write all of your asynchronous logic in the function if you if you wanted. So we, there's we a reason could just like bring this right up into here and it would be okay. Yeah, there's a reason though that. People easily get asynchronous flow wrong a lot mm -hmm. of the time. E even I do. And these callbacks, while they feel kind of like, what, why, you know, why do I need a callback to do async logic, right? And some of it is you get to opt in only to specific parts of it without having to write all of the flow. Yeah. You know? And like, Jordan you know, in the chat just mentioned, like, if you use dot then you also have to write a catch. You also have yeah. to handle error states and make sure the exactly. data came back. So that's like we could we could easily opt into an on error here, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we could do something like on settled, which is just like, hey, give me, give me the post or the error, you know, whichever one it happened to be. You could kind of handle it all in one function. Um, and in fact, there's also another life cycle that happens with mutations called on mutate, which lets us do some really tricky, cool stuff if Ooh. you're interested. Interesting, yeah. So I mean, we've got. We've got 30 minutes on the clock, so we can dive into whatever you want here. Okay, so before we move forward with this, let's let's add kind of like a quality of life improvement to our application. Okay. Um, let's go to the index page. Index. And it doesn't really matter where we put it, so let's just put it up here by sidebar, I guess. All right, we'll do it. All right, we'll do it above sidebar. Okay. Um, and I just have a component here that I've called a uh, global loader. I think it's called global loader. It's in the components. Yeah. It's in okay. the components directory. So you can just import global. It's the default export default. Got it. Yeah. So import global loader from components, global loader. Okay. And then uh, let's head back to our application, make sure that that's showing up. It, it should just de by default show up in the top, uh, the top right hand corner of our app. Here? Yeah, yep, right up there. Um, and now let's go into Global Loader just to check out the code, what's going in there. Okay. I'm actually gonna change it to fixed. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so in that here, way it'll like, stick with us. So, so, to preface this a little bit, in, in fact, I, I probably should have showed you this first. Let's go to just the blog index page. 
blog index. Yep. Here. Yep. Now you, you we know now that React Query is automatically fetching in the background, you know, all the time, you know, and and it'd be nice to know when that's happening. So you can actually use the uh, post query dot is fetching, which is different from is loading. Like is loading is kind of one of those enum states, you know, mm -hmm. it's a hard loading state that doesn't have any data. Is fetching could be happening at any time during the successful stage of your application. Right. And so, that, and that's the back, that's the background, right? It's right. like, I'm checking any, to see if any anything that is fetching. Yeah. Yep. And, and you could show kind of, you know, Hey, let's show some loading when that's happening. Right. So any, now if you go back to the blog page, anytime that you like refocus the window or mm -hmm. anything like that, it kind of shows you when it's loading. Um, and you can do this kind of like if you're doing a small little app or something like that, you mm -hmm. could do that in every single place. Right. But what I've seen is it's kind of nice to just have a background loading indicator overall. Um, instead of having to do this, like in every single template that you own. Yeah. So instead of doing that one in the blog and every single other page, let's go back to this global loader that we were in and we can actually import, uh, use is fetching. Okay. From, from react query. Really simple hook to use. It's just const is fetching equals use is fetching. And then you just say is fetching, then we'll show it. Otherwise we won't. Okay. And let's do this. Yeah, just uh, to make. Just get... Okay. And so now what should happen here, so save that, cool. is, yeah, we see that kind of come in and out. So I'll click, come back up. There it is. And note, like it's happening for the blog now. It's happening for the admin section now. It's happening for the like page edit. Um, yep. That's slick. That's really yeah, slick. And, and it, it's kind of a fuzzy feeling that it's like, oh, it, we're synchronizing, right? Mm -hmm. We're synchronizing with the server. Um, and that global loader is going to help us kind of see, give us some visual indications about what we're about to do with the mutation stuff. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, and so I, I see a request in the chat to do optimistic updates. Is that where we're headed next? Yes, that is exactly where we're going. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay. So optimistic updates can depend on, uh, it can, a lot of it can depend on what your API can do. And it also depends kind of on your confidence level of your API and your data and what's happening. So I'm going to sure. kind of show you on the spectrum of easy to more difficult slash risky. Uh, okay. how you can kind of balance that. Okay. I think we should go over with save, use save post. Let's do the post saving first. Okay. I think this is a good place to do it. So optimistic updates, there's kind of two stages. You can, like the slowest way to synchronize is to invalidate queries, right? Because that means that your mutation went and it came back and then you validate and it goes out and comes back. So it's right. kind of like two round trips, right? Right. If you can cut that down to one round trip, that's a lot better. So if you know for a fact that this post coming back from your patch mm -hmm. is the exact post that you would get from your query invalidation, yeah. then instead of doing the invalidate queries, you could just do set query data posts post ID post. Okay. So now, All right. so now we don't even need to invalidate, uh, that, that post. you know, we will still probably want to invalidate all of our posts though. So hold up. So when I do this, okay. So that didn't, um, I think I did that wrong because it looked like it's still loaded. Um, I think it's, oh, it's because we're, I'm invalidating queries post. Let's take this off for a second. Um, now okay. try it. Okay. Let's see if, let's see if it works. So it happens pretty quick here. Did I miss a step? 
Uh, we shouldn't have invalidate queries going off anywhere. We're on use save post, right? Use save post. Oh, there we go. That seemed to work. It did work. Well, it was, so how long should it take? Like it, it, I guess so that's the, the length as, of time to run the mutation. I was expecting as instant, as the, so that's, that's my fault. Yeah, so as soon as the mutation comes back, that title should update. Got you. You should not see a loading up in the top. And so, the so this, this is what will happen. Um, this button is going to show us how long the mutation takes to run. And as soon as the mutation finishes, this should update. Whereas before, the mutation would finish, and then this would have to send off another query to refresh the latest version. So exactly. we get double the load. So OK, so yep. when, I, when I do this, edited, watch this button down here. It's going to say saving. And as soon as it says saved, this one's updated. So that's our, exactly. that's our immediate update. Yep, and we just and went down to one round trip. Yeah, the, this is the, this is safe because we know like this will not happen unless that mutation succeeded. Exactly, and as long as you okay. know that that post coming back is the same post that will get you know refetched on this query, right? Then you're good, and so, you're good to go. So this is less of of optimistic updating and more of like cutting out extra work. Yeah, I mean it is kind of an it's not an optimistic update, but it's just kind of utilizing what you have in front of you, right? Right, right. Now, another level of this is if you were to uh, if you were to set this query data here, it's instant here, but then if you go back to the main blog list, that post title will still be out of date in the posts list. Right. Because they're separate, they're separate queries. And that's where you can choose like, okay, they're not on that page. Mm -hmm. So you could just invalidate. Right. But if you really wanted to, you could even do it for the main posts query too. And, and you would just kind of like loop through and find the post and replace its data. Well, it takes an updater syntax, just like React oh, sets, okay. query, just like React State does. So you can say, you know, return old uh, map and and you say, you know, if if D dot ID equals the post ID then we're going to return the new post. Otherwise, we're just going to return what was there. Right. And now you don't even need this invalidate queries. Okay. Because, because now we're optimistically updating both of the individual query and not optimistically updating. We're, we're short circuiting, right? Right, right, right. So let's so it, save. Yeah. It says updated. Go to blog. It's updated. And we never saw the loader. Exactly. So that's slick. That's really nice. And and that's not even getting into optimistic updates. That's just kind of normal, right? That's that's, just, that, that's just like I guess the the efficient way to do this, right? It's less work yeah. to get the desired result. It's less work on your on your bandwidth, right? Right. And, and that's just up to you. I th I think a lot of times people over obsess about the bandwidth because. If your user refreshes the page, they got to make those requests, mm -hmm. you know. And if if you can't, if if your application cannot handle your user refreshing the page every five or ten seconds, then I think you have bigger problems um, on your on your API side, right? Mm -hmm. But it's true that we can be very efficient by by doing this and save on bandwidth where possible with low yeah. bandwidth devices and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And, and like for simple things like this, where it's a single list, this makes sense. I think if you had posts and then you also had a query for comments and you also had a query for likes or something, you're probably doing more work to, to like manage those caches together than to just invalidate the, the queries. Right. Yep. Exactly. Um, so now, now we can actually get into like an optimistic update. Like yes. what is an optimistic update? An optimistic update is where you are taking action on the user interface mm -hmm. before you actually know if it's been persisted to disk. Right? Yes. And so, and this is something that I'd never really heard about this until GraphQL started to kind of take the world by storm, right? Like optimistic right. updates were something that I think were, they probably existed before, but they were popularized by, mm -hmm. by GraphQL. Absolutely. So, with using mutation, it's it's pretty easy to do an optimistic update. Uh, we can use the on mutate lifecycle callback, and this just says like it's basically when we call the mutation function mm -hmm. that's going to trigger this. This is going to run first, and you get the variables. They get okay. called with it, so this will be like the new post, right? 
And this is the same, these are the same? Yep, exactly. These are the same. Okay. Just for consistency, let's change. Let's update uh, these to new post. And then the, the this one too would be new new post or? Yep. Yeah, we could do that one too. So values, values, new idea, uh, whoops, new post. There we go. Okay. So it's all, it's all the same. Uh, so on, with this on mutate, what we're going to do is we need to, um, first we're going, I'm just going to show you how to just, uh, update, update the data. Right. And it's, it's actually really easy because it's just this, it's all the same stuff right here, mm -hmm. you know? So we probably don't need to optimistically update the main post list because it's not on screen. Sure. Uh, but this one, we can optimistically update the individual post ID for sure. Okay. So and then do we need to do this one again, or can we leave that out? Um, we, well, there is a chance that the payload you send is different than the payload you get back. Because if, if we were doing like a use get, create post or yeah. there's validations, right? We'd get auto-generated IDs. We would get exactly. timestamps. So it's always, and, it's yeah. always a good idea to, if you're doing an optimistic update, you either want to utilize what you're getting back or at the very least invalidate afterwards. Gotcha. Okay. So if we, if we run this, let's just save this and just run it as is. And let's just okay. see what happens. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab this one and we'll say edited. And save. Oh, we got an error. What was our error? Post is not defined. We, I think we edited things. Oh, new post. There we go. Tag yep. team. All right. Back again. No, no one chat. Huh? Okay. Um, all right. So let's. Edited. I was lagging a little bit on the video there. Look there at it go. go. Beautiful. Nice. Oh, we still yeah, got an error though. What was our error? Not read property map of undefined. Did we map in here? Would it be this okay. one? So yeah, it is it is possible here where um if we loaded straight into the individual post, then we'd never made a query. Exactly. So right. um we, you could just do, you know, like if not old, like if there's nothing in there, then you could just return old, which would be undefined, right? Um, you could also do this where you can say like if query cache uh, dot get query data posts, mm -hmm. you know, if we have, if we have query data for posts, then, then we'll perform this operation. Okay. No, that, and that this, okay. So this is logical, right? This makes sense to me where we're saying like, if we've queried for the post, this one we know we have because we are, well, actually we're we're just replacing this data wholesale. Right. So there's no kind of update or failure there. Yeah. Um, the other way we could do it as well is you could just default old to an array if you wanted. You should be like, hey, if it doesn't exist, then let's just make it an array. Oh uh, uh, yeah, because then, and that would also help with, um, well. And you could just say new post. Yeah, but, but really the efficient way to do that would be the if, right? So it's like, yeah. if, if it has data, then we're going to do that. Otherwise, we're going to basically just set query data post to, like, you could just include it to have your new post. No, this will work. This will work. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, it, yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. So in, in this, to to just kind of like talk through this code and make sure I understand it, what we're saying here is if we have an existing post cache, we've hit the home page, we've made that query, then we're going to replace the the old query of this post ID with the changes we just made. Otherwise, if we haven't hit post yet, we're going to create a whole new entry for post, which is an array that has only the post we've created. Yep. Okay. And honestly, that that scares me. This is all just risk management, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this scares me a little bit because I I wouldn't want it to stay that way. So I would also do like an invalidate queries here uh, on that main post. Just you know, like we're setting it optimistically so that it looks good when they go back to that post page. Right. But I, I don't want it to stay that way. And luckily, when you invalidate a query that's not being used on the screen right now, it doesn't refetch it. 
uh, automatically. They would create a ton of bandwidth mm -hmm. um, in an application. So it just kind of marks it as stale so that the next time it gets kind of shown on the screen, it refetches in the background. Got it. Okay, great. So then we can we can kind of test this. Uh, do we need to make these changes in create post as well? Um, yeah, but they'll be slightly different. Okay. Uh, let's see. So if yeah, I mean we'll just we'll just make this happen. Um, let's. And we're also only halfway done with the on mute with the optimistic mutation to the optimistic. Ah! There's some things. Behold some now, my but. bucket. What, what, what are y'all doing in there? What's going on in chat right now? Um, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So we've got, uh, we've got, um, so the, okay. So chat, I see you're playing with sound effects right now to, to avoid a lot of noise. Um, all of the, the exclamation point redeem, those are, those are gone. Um, so it's only the, the other ones, uh, which if you want to see them, you got to look at the learn with Jason repo because I haven't had a chance to like fix this up. Um, they should all they should all be there though. They're in the Learn with Jason uh, GitHub repo under functions. Um, but uh, but yeah. So all right. So if we update, I save, and now there's no error, and we can see that things are changed. So I go to view post, and it's already updated, and we never saw that. Or actually, we probably did see that. I just wasn't looking for it because um, we we refreshed. Uh, thank yep. you for the sub. Peps, Peps, Patagon. I'm sorry. I not. I'm getting that wrong. Um. <laughs> so I say we hurry and do the uh, like the use create post stuff too. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so over here, it's going to kind of be the same thing. I'm just going to kind of paste over what we have. Um, but instead of the individual post stuff, it's just going to be. So use create post. Well, no, it is going to be the individual post, but I guess it's just a little different, right? So you'll you'll get the new post back, mm -hmm. right? And um, it's it's going to be this right here where we don't have the individual post to look at, but we do have this. Um, so we can say, okay, if if we have the main post query on our page, we're going to do the same thing, uh, except for we're not going to map over it. Like really, we're just going to add it on. Mm -hmm. So it'll be uh, old. So it'll just kind of spread. Right. Spread the old ones in and then add the new post. Right. And And this is interesting because this is somewhat optimistic as well, kind of risky. We don't really know if that's the position that post needs to take in that array, Fair. you know? And, and so we're going to want to invalidate that regardless. Right. Um, well, and that, that seems like something like this is going to matter based on your app, right? right? Like if, if you know for sure, every time somebody posts, like it's a, a chat box or a comment, then you can optimistically put it at the bottom and you're safe. If it's something right. where you're doing like, calendar entries that clearly is not going to be the case so you you would yeah. need to run some logic there yep you'd have to and it's sad that you'd have to duplicate some of the logic from the back end to know exactly where that goes right mm -hmm. uh, or hopefully it doesn't matter where it comes back in your query cache and you're like doing and that your, your ui is smart enough template. to make that yeah. work yeah so that should work for our use create post and it's not even optimistic yet um, okay so from here, we could again do the on mutate mm -hmm. uh, and get the new post. And then do, um, so it, it's, kind of the, it's kind of the same deal. You know, it's like, hey, if, if that's there, then we want to add it. But we don't necessarily want to in, invalidate it, you know? Okay. Yeah. And, and at this point, it's like, okay, if, if we're doing it in on mutate, do we really need to do it here? You know, like if, if it succeeds, then really we just want to, and uh, we just want to replace it. You know, I, I would just say after optimistic updates, it's just so much safer to just invalidate the query. Sure. Yeah. Um, that, and that's especially when we're working with, especially when we're working with arrays and positions and removing Holy items, and buckets, it, it gets really work? complex. You need to be able to fall back on something that's, pretty safe yeah so. 
Yeah, and, and what I like about this too is, is that basically what we're doing here is we're saying we're reasonably confident that our mutation is going to succeed. Right. Assume, and, and we would want error handling here as well. Um, but, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll say like we're reasonably confident that our mutation is going to succeed. So as soon as we submit our form, we should rewrite the list. Mm -hmm. Then as soon as we get a, a, a confirmation back, we should just in the background, not blocking the user experience, but in the background, replace our query with whatever's true yep. in the database. Just synchronize. Yep. Yeah. That, in fact, uh, you, you bring up a good point about error handling. I think we should jump back over to the use save post and take okay. care of some of that. Okay. Um, Do you want to try this first before we? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's let's make sure that our UI is still working. Okay. So we've got our here's our list, and I'm gonna just a new post, and and what should happen is when I save this, we should see it immediately show up in the list here. So let me. Yep. Oh no, post query data map. What did we get wrong here? Um, oh, I have a theory. It was use create post. And we said old new post. Oh, oh no, we didn't return it here. There we go. OK, so now try that one more time. Um, look at that. That is beautiful. Um, and nice. and this is like this is a really nice experience where now holy buckets, we never did that just work <laughs> and we triggered a stampede. Excellent. Okay. So, <laughs> so but this is great. Like we we just put a flow in place where we use the form. As soon as the form submits, we're able to put that into memory and we're able to continue using our app as if everything is fine. Now, this is also the workflow though that makes apps infuriating if it's done wrong. Like if I'm in Notion and I type in a bunch of code or I type in a bunch of text and then Notion does like a refresh and half of the last sentence I wrote disappears, I'm furious. So it is really important to handle this well. Exactly. Um, and it all comes down to the confidence that you have with your API. Um, so on that, on that create post, the use create post hook, we also need to handle the situation that something goes wrong. Yes. So let me get back um, into use create post. Yep. And then using some deductive reasoning here, I'm assuming we've got on error. And if we get something back, it will give us an error. Exactly. Okay. So what happens here though, is that by the time the error happens, uh, there could have already been some stuff uh, that happened with uh, like optimistic updates. Right. We've already optimistic up, optimistically updated it here. So how do you know what to set it back to? Well, you need to kind of snapshot. Uh, so it'd be like the old, it'd be the old, old, posts. old. No, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> old posts, yeah. So the old posts query cache dot get query data mm -hmm. and, and you just grab the posts. Okay. Um, so it's just kind of snapshotting like, Hey, what's there right now. Right. Okay. And then you kind of do your optimistic update and Really, it's whatever you return right here. There's two, two ways to do this. You can return the old post right here, mm -hmm. and it's going to pop up right here. So error variables, which are what you called it with, so it'd be like the new post. And then this is the rollback value. So this old post comes so in right here. This Okay, so this is our rollback value, and that gets dropped here. So then yep. if this goes wrong, we could do a query cache, set query data uh, posts to old posts. Yep. And this is our, this is our recovery. Um, yep. So we can do and something. Really, when something errors, it's kind of nice to just invalidate too. You okay. Know? So we could console log like error just so that we get a, like some explanation of what went wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you would also do a query cache invalidate queries posts. Yep. And see, we, we've got that two places here now. So mm -hmm. what, what we could do here is just say uh, unsettled. So no matter what, we will yep. always. You read my mind. Gotcha. So just all, always invalidate. And then the other thing too that's cool here is you don't even have to do the rollback inside of your on error. Okay. Uh, you could do something like this, where it's just the rollback value is a function. So you can say like if rollback, then call rollback. 
And then up here, you just return a function. Oh, and, and now we've encapsulated this logic. Mm -hmm. this like this part makes sense to me, right? Where we were basically saying, yeah. like, this is what it was. This is what we want it to be. And this is our error handler. And this this feels very reacty. This is kind of like the use effect uh, where you've yeah. got like a setup and a teardown. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that. Yeah. So this this is cool. I like this. And, and, it, and we showed like it'll work both ways, right? Like where we have we we can return just the values and then write the logic in on error. Or yeah. we can we can provide the error handler as like a function of our our optimistic updating logic if we want yeah. to group that. And so that way, if you want to reuse like error handling across your application, you can. If you want to reuse mutation like on mutation optimistic update logic across your app, you can. You can kind of compose where you see fit. Oh, that's slick. That's really really nice. Um, and the timing here is great because we so we got this we got this running. We got our basic error handling in place. We've got, um, I mean, we've got a full, full app like this. This great app that uh, the first time we load the page, it loads great, uh, and then after that, we are able to just pop in and out of all this stuff, and we get these really fast loads. Um, we can keep testing. We update. We just keep going. New, new, new. It it live reloads. Ah, it's beautiful. It's uh, it, that is a really, really nice pattern. This feels good. Like it feels nice yeah. to use this. So make sure you go and try out React Query uh, and uh, like go check out the rest of the Tan Stack. There's so much good stuff in here. Oh, I um, forgot one more thing that would be cool. We we don't have time for it, but uh, the next step for this would be prefetching. So that kind of segues into the future of React, where you've got suspense and concurrent mode and stuff. Sure. Uh, getting into prefetching is really fun. Like you could do it where if you hover over one of those blog posts, we you just prefetch the data, so that by the time you click on it, it's there. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So um, and then Tony just shared a a Discord link. Um, so I will pull that up as well. We'll make sure that makes it into the um into the show notes. Is there anywhere else that people should go if they want to follow up with you or learn more about this? Uh, no, Twitter, the Discord is actually a great place. Lots of people there talking about React Query and answering questions. The community is very helpful, very hot right now. So excellent, great place to learn. Cool. Um, so Tanner, thank you so much for for taking the time to teach us today. This is a really powerful tool. I can see huge potential for this, and uh, I, I can definitely see this showing up in a lot of projects from here. Chat. Uh, as always, thank you for hanging out with us and make sure that you check out our sponsors. We, um, we have live captioning happening today brought to you by white co captioning. So thank you as always. Uh, and that is made possible by Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0 who all chipped in to make the show more accessible to more people, which I really appreciate from the bottom of my heart. Um, with that, I think we're going to call this episode a success. Tanner, thank you so, so much chat. Stay tuned. We're going to raid. And make sure you check the schedule because we got some good stuff coming up on Thursday. Wait, 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 wait. Look at it. Uh, we have Zell coming on to teach us how to build a no framework JavaScript drag and drop. So this is going to be a good deep dive into how JavaScript actually works and, and how you can do things using just the platform. No, no frameworks or tool sets. Um, so make sure you turn in on Thursday. Make sure you check the schedule for the rest of what's coming on because we've got a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. Uh, I, I can't. I cannot even start with how excited I am for, for this whole schedule. Um, I think that's the show. Tanner, thanks again. We'll see you next yeah, time. Thanks for having me.